All right, boys and girls, I am going to give you the definitive answer to the Maverick 250 early to mid 70s tube amplifier. Got a lot of information out there. Uh, some is right, some is wrong, so we're just going to square everything together. We do, in fact, have the DNA Manufacturing Company's Maverick 250 dual power correct instructions from back in the day the maximum recommended drive power is 4 watts on the AM 16 watts on the PEP sideband you do not want to drive this bad boy with a whole bunch of wattage you will hurt it trust me and tubes they don't grow on trees speaking of tubes which tubes does it take you've got options you need four 6LQ6s, one 6AQ5, and four 6JT6As. These are 6 volt tubes, not 12. These prices you see on here, they're about a year and a half old. Getting them online, you will do well. The 6JE6C is a direct replacement for the 6LQ6. The 6JT6A, that's the one you gotta get, no options. And the 6AQ5, also known as an EL90, uh, you have a few options right there of what will work. A lot of folks replace those four tubes, those four tubes, and neglect to replace that one tiny L cheapo tube. And guess what? You get no drive power. So make sure you get all the drive power you need from the Maverick 250. Here is the Maverick 250. It has two meters. The top meter is when you're on high power. The bottom meter is when you're on low power. You determine high power and low power from this power switch. In the up position, you are on high power. In the down position, you are on low power. These are the control knobs for tuning in high power. These two here are the control knobs for tuning low power. This is a final tune drive control. There is also in the back, very important, don't forget about it. Back here somewhere. This grid control. Moving on, let's talk about these controls. Again, this is low power and high power, not power on. It is low power and high power. This is your sideband control. Down in the off position, you are not using sideband. Up in the on position, you are using the sideband delay. It's confusing, I know. You'd think that would mean sideband. It doesn't. That means sideband. On. The next control is your standby control. Your standby control turns off the main filaments and is a great thing to do when you're not chatting for a while and your box is getting kind of hot. In the down position, you are not in standby. In the up or on position, you are in standby. Standby, no power is going out of the box. Standby off, you are going to get the full benefit of your amplifier. The filament switch. This, in fact, is the power switch. No filament juice, no power. Filament on, you've got power. This is a power on light, which in my case, doesn't work. This unit gets really hot when you talk on it for a long time. The internal fan, deep down in there, is pretty useless and after a long time, <laughs> 50 plus years, you're gonna need to replace that. So what I did was I simply wired in this AC fan 
pulling air out of the box and the air is quite warm especially when used after a while as you can see I got a nice big gaping hole in the top of the case there's your light show there's that little tube way back there on the right hand side four main tubes the four drive tubes by the way I want to point out and if you don't listen to anything else I say this amp can kill you you can die screwing around on the inside of this amp there's a lot of voltage in there don't be stupid electricity will kill you and it will hurt the entire time you are dying so even unplugged the capacitors in the bottom of this box still have charge if you don't know how to discharge capacitors look it up it's not a big deal just make sure that you are discharged before you go screwing around in there just saying brothers and sisters nobody wants to die all right it is time to learn how to tune this amplifier. So what's really going on when I'm squeezing those knobs and flipping that knob and playing around over here? What you're really doing is you're tuning the amplifier to your antenna. You want the lowest SWR that you could possibly get and by matching this entire grid system to your antenna you'll get the maximum amount of power and you'll avoid hurting the amplifier itself. The instructions tell us start first by tuning the high power grid and it's done like so. First you tune, then you load, then you check your driver, then you check your grid. One, two, three, four. How do I tune? Typically about a watt and a half dead key is all you really want on this. Seems to sound pretty good that way. When you dead key, this meter is going to work its way to the right hand side showing the direct current milliamperage that it's putting out. You'll turn this tuning knob in minute fractions so that the meter continues to go further to the right, further to the right, and then when it starts to back off to the left, Turn it back to its max on the right, unkey, wait a moment, key again, and then start running the load. Same thing, you're going to tune it so that the knob, as turned, will have the meter go more and more to the right until it backs off, and then you turn it back to where it was at its peak. Then do it again. The tune. The load get to a good place where you don't see much difference. Now come down to your drive tune. Turn that knob until you see the maximum forward reflection on high power. Then go to the back of the unit and adjust that grid screw. Right there. Adjust that grid screw Oh no, I think I might have given out some false information. Stand by in the on position is full power. It is not standby. So <laughs> oddly, this switch is the only switch where the word at the bottom is what it's actually doing. So standby down, that's standby. Apologies if I confused you. Uh, I'm not gonna go back and edit this because I'm not a videographer. I'm a CB radio operator. Anyway, standby on is not standby. Standby on is work. Once you've adjusted the grid screw to show you the maximum milliamperage on this meter, come back, tune, load, tune, load, check drive. Once that's working all its magic as far forward as it can, go to low power. Looking at the lower meter, you want to do the same thing. Tune, then load. Tune, then load. 
looking for the maximum deflection up the meter for low power. Interestingly enough, almost every one of these Mavericks I've ever seen doesn't have a knob here on the load. I don't know what's that all about. Uh, this one's pretty worn out because you know everybody and their brother has grabbed that thing with a pair of pliers to turn it. But that will turn. Um, one's in great condition, have a little slot in there, just like the grid tune in the back, and you'd put your little screwdriver in there and do that tuning. But um, that's how you can do that. So that's not going to be a major tuning issue for you because once you've got this high power tuned up pretty good, the low power goes pretty quickly. Then fuss once again with your drive. Then check your grid in the back again. And now put it back into high power. This is the meter for high power. You'll do a tune and a load one last time. And then when that is all the way up as maximum as you can get it, you actually have to get that little meter to come down just a hair. And as the instructions tell us, turn the load control clockwise until the meter drops approximately two divisions on the scale. Then repeat the tune control as a final adjustment. And that's it. If you follow those instructions correctly, you'll get the maximum life out of your Maverick 250. Starting with brand new tubes is a great idea. All right, so let's turn on the radio and see what this bad boy will do. Okay, well, of course, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to calibrate your meters so that your SWR and your modulations are as they should be. The big CAL line there. What does that mean? Yeah, yeah, and calibrate. So you key up your radio, you calibrate by tuning those knobs until it's lined up with that calibration mark and make sure it's quiet outside otherwise you're going to get some deflection calibrated put your switches back into operating position please 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 check your SWR before you go any further quick blast woo doggy yeah I'm liking that SWR alright so here we are in the 2000 watt scale so, uh, I'm sorry, the 1,000 watt scale, top number that says 1,000 is 1,000 watts, 800, 600, 400, etc. We'll go ahead and we'll take it off peak. We'll put it into the average mode. Key up. Looks like the old Maverick tuned up well is doing about 275 on a dead key. We'll go to peak. Ah, yeah, oh, yeah. We got a little over 400 on the peak. I can tell you that um, if you want to give up some SWR, it'll go up to 600, no problem. Uh, but, you know, that's uh, like we like to say, ghost watts. <laughs> you hear me out there, Luke? Anyway, so uh, we're not driving a whole hard. Uh, I'll go ahead and put it into standby put that down to the 20 watt we'll go to the peak or average rather and so we're driving at about uh, so that will be the lower scale just under 2 watts I'm driving it just under 2 watts and then uh, on peak well I'm, I'm pushing it pretty hard so we'll put that back on that 200 watt scale you're looking at the lower number 20 equals 200. Oh, yeah. That's about a 45 watt peak. It's probably not a real good idea to do that for too long. Anyway, so we're driving it with the old Anytone double six, double six. Uh, we got it tuned down. And uh, that, my friends, is exactly how you tune a Maverick 250. Don't let anybody else tell you any different. I got it right here in black and white. And oh, by the way, Just in case you needed a schematic, give me a shot if you want me to PDF to you. We'll talk with y'all soon. Be very nice. The Maverick 250 with dual power by DNA Manufacturing Company out of Scotts Bluff, Nebraska. Circa February 1st, 
1973. We're gone. Bye bye. Check it out. The Maverick 250 out of DNA. Uh, 1972. Rocking the glass, baby.